Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Um, I want to talk to you all about super intelligence alignment. Um, as you might have seen, we just uh, launched a new team at OpenAI. Um, it's called Super Alignment, um, and our goal is to align super intelligence in four years. And uh, we have a bunch of like to in order to exceed. There's a bunch of things that we need. In particular. Um, uh, OpenEI has committed 20% of the compute secured to date to this, to this general effort. And that means all the GPUs that OpenEI has right now and the ones that you know, we've sent purchase orders for. Um, and uh, Ilya Sutzgaver, the co-founder and chief scientist, is joining the effort. He'll, be, he'll making it his uh, core research focus. Um, and we want to solve this problem in four years. Um, and so. Well, uh, this is definitely an ambitious goal, and we're not guaranteed to succeed. Uh, I'm optimistic that we can do it, and I want to tell you about why. But before we get into that, I want to briefly kind of like give a high-level overview of what we're actually trying to do. Um, so aligning superintelligence sounds like a daunting task, and it's very unclear how you would even do it right now. And uh, I'm personally of the opinion that we'll probably need very different methods than what we're pursuing right now. Right? Like the primary way to align language models right now is using reinforcement learning from human feedback or RLHF, which you probably have heard of. Um, but we believe that RLHF will not scale because it fundamentally assumes that humans can look at what AI systems are doing and say whether this is good or not. But if you're supervising AI on a very difficult task, like uh, then, like for example, if you know you ask a language model to write an entire code base, um, it's very difficult to actually find all the problems in that code base. And like if uh, the AI system was m malicious, it could try to hide some Trojans or like some other really, like, really nasty things in there, and we might not find them. And so, what we want to do is we want to like find a solution to this hard problem by um, automating the research on it. So our main plan is to align an automated alignment researcher and then use 20% of OpenAI's compute or more to just run it a lot. And then uh, that way we'll be able to make a lot more progress than we currently can with like the intestinal alignment research that we're doing. Um, and so, if we take this path, the primary question then becomes is, how do we make this automated alignment research efficiently aligned? Because uh, alignment research is kind of a hard task and it'll be difficult to supervise. And so um, we basically uh, need to get all the help that we can for uh, like aligning the system or like helping us evaluate what the system is doing. And so specifically, that means scalable oversight that we've been working on in the past with, for example, the like, uh, language models writing critiques uh, work. And there's other AI labs have done other research on it. Um, and then we are, like, started a new effort on generalization. We want to understand how models generalize um, from easy questions or easy tasks that we can effectively supervise to harder questions. Um, and uh, we have some research in the works that we are hoping to publish soon. And then additionally, we kind of like have to answer this question of like, if we manage to train a really aligned system or like in a system that you know, is aligned enough and roughly human level so you can do the automated alignment research roughly as well as we could, um, how do we know that this is actually aligned? How do we gain confidence in its alignment? And so. This is why we're looking at automated interpretability and like adversarial testing and so on. And so one, one particular thing we want to do is like train deliberately, like deceptively uh, misaligned models and then see if those models could pass our evals. And so if we have to, like, if we try really hard and we can't produce a model that is deceptively aligned, uh, oh, sorry, deceptively misaligned, um, that would pass our evals, then that's a good sign that our evals are actually me uh, measuring something meaningful. It's obviously not a guarantee. Um, so why am I optimistic that this could work? Uh, I think one thing we've learned over the last few years is the technical path that is AI, AI is taking is actually looking quite favorable to alignment in general. We have these models that actually understand natural language really well and that we can talk to. And, that's like very different from like if you train deep RL agent in some kind of 
uh, complex multi-agent game um, where they might not understand the way humans thinking about values. Um, in some ways, I think we have like a more modest goal, right? Like we're trying to align this roughly human level alignment researcher instead of you know, like aligning a system on all possible tasks or aligning something that's vastly smarter than us. Um, I think another thing that we're gonna be leveraging a lot is this general principle that evaluation is easier than generation. So if I have to do the research myself, that's a lot of work. But um, if some automated system does the research and all I have to do is evaluate whether or not it was good or whether or not I you know, believe that it is the right path, uh, that is fundamentally easier. And you can see that across lots of domains, right? Like there's the obvious like computer science examples, there's lots of you know, like NP tasks that are easier to check than to produce solutions for. But also I think it just ha holds across many domains, right? Like if you're making a purchasing decision, it's like much easier to know like what is a good smartphone than it is to build a smartphone. Um, and then finally, I think uh, we actually like setting ourselves up for iteration because we can now measure progress on so many, so many of these aspects, right? Like with automated interpretability, we have a score function and we can like make improvements and then measure it on the score function, whether and like how good are the explanations for neurons that we have. Or for scalable oversight, we can like produce subtly flawed answers to questions and then see whether uh, our human or like our AI assisted human can find the problems in that answer. Um, and so I'm not claiming that these metrics are gonna be like actually get us all the way, but I think they will help us make meaningful local progress that then will you know, uh, tell us where we need to go. Um, yeah, so I think overall, I'm really excited about this uh, approach. And um, if you want to learn more, please come talk to me about it later. Thank you. I think we probably have time for a question. Any oh. question, comment? Yes, we have one already. Lewis. Um, so your automated AI, uh, thank you. For your automated alignment research, you, I assume from what you said, you're envisioning uh, this kind of dealing with kind of all aspects of the kind of alignment research pipeline. So kind of conceptual, maybe theoretical stuff, empirical stuff. And so my question is, um, how far away do you think we are from being able to do that currently to the level that we could say replace the median AI safety researcher who's working on each of those kind of aspects of the, of the research problem? Yeah, I think... I mean, we've tried a lot with GPT-4, and honestly, it's not really good enough to contribute that much. Um, we've done a little bit of like scale loss. My best guess is, is probably between GPT-5 and GPT-6 uh, is going to be where a lot of the action is. But uh, yeah, it remains to be seen. Cool, thanks. One thing that I totally forgot in Colleen's talk is that after each of your guys' talk, we're going to ask you to produce a challenge, like something that you want other people to solve, uh, because that will be the prompts from which we will generate working groups. Okay. So if you look at the people here in the room, like, uh, you know, how could they help, like, meaningfully to, like, you know, solve problems that you're interested in? Oh, I would be really interested in hearing what is, like, the biggest downside or the biggest risk with this plan. Why is it a bad plan? <laughs> Love it. We do some red teaming here. Yeah. It's great. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jan. Thank you. Wonderful.